Hello and welcome to The Wellen. I'm Tracy Adler, Johnson Poet Director. And today I'm gonna to take you on a behind the scenes tour of some of our education and back of house spaces. Uh, the glass cases in Archive Hall are a defining feature of the museum, and they provide glimpses into these spaces, which are open by appointment, but rarely open to the public. So today we're going to visit the Overlook classroom, our seminar rooms, the material preservation laboratory, as well as art storage and other spaces along the way. Okay, let's get started. So now we're here in the Overlook. The Overlook is our classroom space. It is also a lecture hall. So when we have visiting artists, they'll give presentations here. And it's called the Overlook because as you can see, it overlooks College Hill Road and it juts out over the entrance of the museum downstairs. Um, this is a really popular space. Our, some of our faculty love teaching here um, because it is uh, the ideal location for showing slides and showing other multimedia as well as giving presentations. Thank you for joining us in the seminar room. Uh, we actually have two seminar rooms and the seminar rooms is where a lot of our teaching happens. And we're joined here by Liz Shannon, our collections curator. And Liz can talk a little bit about how these spaces are activated. Yep, yeah, um, so we welcome classes and um, other visitors to the seminar rooms. Uh, seminar rooms are a space where we store artwork, as you can see in the drawers behind us. Um, we also bring artwork out for classes. So you can see here we have some examples of prints by Yuki Shanabari. And the whole idea is that people are learning through actually engaging directly with artworks as opposed to just images of artworks. There's something really powerful about that engagement that happens when people are actually seeing the work itself. And sometimes it's a historical work and sometimes it's a contemporary work and they have very different feels. Sometimes there are three-dimensional works like uh, sculpture, sometimes it's photography, or in this case, we're showing some uh, selection of prints. What's really interesting about this suite of prints by Yinka Shonabare is also that it comes in a custom case. And even though these are editions, the case itself is actually completely unique. Jay is going to, uh, Jay is one of our preparators and he's just gonna be holding up this beautiful case. Um, Cowboy Angels is the name of this body of work, and it's uh, covered with this Dutch wax print um, material. Thanks, Jay. And so, as Liz was mentioning, the drawers are filled with artwork. So this is art storage, as well as a space that can be reserved. Um, and we're gonna pull out one of these drawers and show you what you might find inside. Um, these can only be handled by, uh, by our incredible team here who have been trained to handle artwork. Although students also are trained and they can become assistants to work with Liz. Maybe you wanna talk a little bit about that. Um, sure, so we have an amazing docent program here and we sometimes bring docents um, kind of further through the museum to work with us in collections. Uh, we also hire um, other students independently who have not been part of the docent program to come work with us in collections to research um, and, and help us handle the artworks in terms of the presentation in the seminaries. This is a great print by Karita Kent. Karita Kent uh, often incorporated graphic imagery with text. So you can see here the huge flowers and then the text in the center. And the work is titled In Touch with the quote in the center. And then at the very bottom, it says, this is the great atonement for being in touch with D.H. Lawrence written at the bottom. Okay, so now we're going to walk into the painting racks. The painting racks are immediately adjacent to the seminar room. It's actually between the two seminar rooms. So it's really useful for bringing classes in that Liz may be engaging with, um, with some flat work in here. And then they can come and look at some of our usually paintings that are on the, the racks in the, in the storage area. It also gives people insight into how artwork is stored. So we use this as a reserved presentational space but it also provides, uh, everyone loves to see where the artwork is stored. And it also gives them a sense of how a professional museum stores their art. So these are actually three works from the Beinecke collection. Um, 
which is a collection of uh, works that engage with the Lesser Antilles. It's split between the Wellen and Special Collections. We have the vast majority of the um, illustrated work paintings, um, some maps um, and drawings also. So these are three examples that are hung on the painting rack specifically for a class um, from art history. Um, and as you can see, we have um, an Osceola Native American portrait here by George Catlin. Um, we have um, a Seminole Child, is the title of this work, and you can see there's also some, some birds included in the lush greenery. And this is um, a, a British gunboat um, being attacked, you can see of people in boats here and figures here. So this is a really great opportunity um, for students to get up close with some of the 2D work that we hold that obviously won't fit in our seminar room drawers. Um, and they can you know, get up closely, see the detail. Um, these works will have students writing papers on them. So now we're going to be moving into seminar room B. So in addition to close looking at art objects for classes, we also use these spaces as workspaces. So I'm here joined by Chris Harrison, who is our incredible preparator and building manager. And we design a lot of exhibitions together. Um, and that's what we're doing right now. We're actually working on our fall show, Rona Bittner Resound. This is gonna be Rona's first solo museum show. Um, and this gives you some insight into how we organize these exhibitions spatially within the gallery space. And the gallery, uh, the Dietrich Exhibition Gallery is right beneath us. This is the Rona Bittner exhibition for this fall. And what we've done is we've created a virtual model of our gallery space. And then within it, we've built virtual versions of Rona's photography. And in this way, we can put, we can test out our ideas. We can put the art on the wall in the place where we think it wants to be. And we can then kind of walk through the room and take a look at the various walls and ha see how the exhibition is going to feel, see how the artwork is going to fit, and get a sense of whether we're moving in the right direction um, and help us in our decision making before we dedicate any of our resources to exhibition construction. So this is a very useful tool. Um, it also allows us to share our ideas with collaborative, uh, with the collaborative team. So we can share our models with visiting artists and with uh, 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 members of the curatorial team um, and test our ideas out, um, make our decisions, and then build the exhibitions and construct the walls and put together the, the bits and pieces that go into to exhibition making. It's a very useful tool um, and it's a lot of fun. It's very cool. Um, I'll also say that we like to keep it flexible. So we design these shows and then once we bring the art into the gallery, we know that art in real life feels different than in the virtual world. So we also like to, um, to allow that kind of responsiveness to happen. So we do these designs, and then when we're in the gallery, I'll often shift things around. Uh, but it's a great way for us to, to get a sense of everything that's going to be in the show, how we're thinking about grouping the show, and some of the walls and other museum furniture that's going to need to be built for the exhibition. Welcome to our lounge. So our lounge is just a general hangout space where, where students can come and study. It's also a place where our docents can come and work together on some of the collaborative projects that they're developing. Um, as Liz mentioned, docents are involved in everything that we do here. We have a cohort of 30 to 40 student docents at any one time, and they're involved in all aspects of the, the inner workings of the museum. Um, one of the features of the, this lounge is um, these beautiful shades, which were designed by Jeff Gibson. Um, that as part of the exhibition that we had in 2018. Um, and it's a real draw when people come into the museum and hopefully they'll come up and hang out in here. We've also worked with our students to design um, aspects of the space. So some of our students have built this workspace over here. This was completely designed by students who are part of the SketchUp team. 
who work alongside Chris to design elements of, um, of the building. And they also work on building this library as well. So this is a fine art library where students can come and do research and um, spend time with some art books and just relax and read and do research. Okay, our administrative offices are also located up here. Um, and so we're gonna just stop in and say, say hi. This is Alexander Jarman, our assistant curator of exhibitions and academic outreach. And he's no doubt either working on an exhibition or reaching out to faculty as we speak. And Marjorie um, Hurley, who is our uh, educator and docent program supervisor. And if you couldn't tell that this is the education space, you'll note from all of the craft things that we have here, Marjorie, maybe you want to talk about some of the materials that you use and some of the programs that you run. Sure. Um, yes, so we have materials for projects ranging from printmaking to drawing and illustration, painting, a little bit of sculpture activity, and we have programs for all age groups. So that includes uh, K through 12 schools, elementary through high school. We have programming for families with young children um, and college students who indeed love crafting. Yeah. So there's all sorts of things here. We get really creative with it. I see that you have one of them from our labor. So this was uh, one of the um, one of the crafts that was available to people last year when we had our exhibition issue across our labor. And Marjorie collaborated with the artist to have these uh, these custom stamps made um, from his artwork so that people could actually make their own prints. Yeah, that was really fun. We still have uh, those stamps and we intend to use them again as well. Thanks, thanks. so much, Marjorie. Sure, thanks for stopping by. The Material Preservation Lab is one of the spaces where we prepare for framing, like conservation, where um, condition reporting happens. So any artwork that's coming into the museum will originally land in the Material Preservation Lab for ex examination and review. So this is a real workspace. Again, this is a behind the scenes space where um, activities are occurring, where we are really preparing for what's going to be coming up in the near future. So right now, our prep team is preparing works that are going to go in the drawers in the object study gallery to coincide with the Rona Bittner exhibition. So Rona is very interested um, in performance. And so a number of the photographs that are being prepared, which means they're being matted and framed and being ascertained for condition, um, that is all happening here in our material preservation lab. So one of the exciting things down here is this is where our compact storage is. And um, this is where we store, instead of the flat work, which we saw upstairs, um, is where we store objects, the three-dimensional uh, works. And you can see there's a huge range of objects in, in the collection. There are shelf space and also drawers here where we can keep small objects. So in here you can see a selection of Native American objects. We have some of our Greek and Cypriot ancient vessels here, and some uh, shards too that are not currently on display. And this is a way for us to store objects to ensure they're safe, prepared away from the public space and that they are easily accessible. So if a class wants to look at some of these objects, Liz can pull them and bring them up to the seminar room so that they're available to be examined more closely. So one of the things that people always ask about, um, because we have these beautiful cases that are 27 feet tall, is how do you get into them? So today we're gonna to show you how they open. And so um, once they're opened, artwork is taken out and brought into them, so we actually just installed um, a new work and so Jay is going to show us how this actually operates. So it's a really simple system that allows for easy access to the objects. So this is a piece by um, Rose B. Simpson that we purchased very recently. It's called Take a Seat. And as you can see, the figure is coming up from the chair. It's an androgynous figure. The work is primarily made of ceramic. So people always ask us what happens in the basement. So the basement is an art storage space as well. 
uh, where we have much larger compact storage and where we also have some additional racks. So we're gonna look at some of those things um, as well. Uh, we often do photography down here. We actually have a setup right here right now um, to photograph objects in the collection. And the aim is to get everything onto our website. So if you go to our website and you go to the collection area, you'll note that almost all of the objects in the collection are in view there. And the goal is so that students and faculty and scholars and the general public can have access to that artwork. So we're constantly working to, um, to improve and add works to the, to the website. So now Jay is gonna open up one of our um, other compact storage spaces in the basement. You'll notice that this is a much deeper space than the one that we saw upstairs. And we have some works that were recently on view by Dante Hayes, which uh, were a commission as part of a creative commission series where he made artworks here on campus for the collection. And we actually just had Dante as a visiting artist uh, two weeks ago where he met with numerous uh, classes. He also did studio critiques with our seniors, uh, gave a public presentation and also um, had some more informal meetings with some of our docents and students. As I mentioned, we also have racks downstairs in addition to the painting racks up on the second floor. So objects that uh, we put into the study collection as opposed to the permanent collection um, tend to either be materials that we would like people to be able to handle. Um, so here we have two of our Cusco paintings. Um, these are objects that came to us without a lot of information associated with them. And so we've been working to research them more thoroughly. Um, we managed to identify this particular saint. So this is Saint Barbara. And um, my collection assistant colleague was able to figure this out from the, the burning tower and also the palm um, and some other attributes by looking at other um, Cusco paintings from the period and other depictions of this saint. Many of our efforts culminate in the shows on view. Here we are in the Dietrich Exhibition Gallery, which is our main exhibition space. And this year for our 10th anniversary, we're featuring Dialogues Across Disciplines, an exhibition of works drawn from the collection, which features almost 150 things from the over 2000 artworks that we've acquired over the last 10 years since the museum's founding. Thanks so much for joining us for this behind the scenes tour. Please follow us on social media and visit our website to hear about exhibitions and programs that are upcoming. And we hope you have the opportunity to visit us in person soon. Thank you.